Hello, today we have Chapter 5, Healing and Wholeness, Section 6, Time and Eternity. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. <laughs> um, if this seems familiar to you, it's because I'm redoing the last section I did because it got cut off and it's been quite some time since I did the other one. I just had a large break, but now I'm starting fresh here. Um, so here we have time and eternity. Paragraph one, God in his knowledge is not waiting, but his kingdom is bereft while you wait. All the sons of God are waiting for your return, just as you are waiting for theirs. This is very helpful to remember that we're all waiting for each other's return and that no matter what ego thoughts I become aware of about those I call other, really I just want to see them as they are. I want to remember them as they are. Delay does not matter in eternity, but it is tragic in time. So if I get caught up in ego thoughts about the ones I call other, or the situations I find myself in, or what I see to be separate things in the world, if I get caught up in those thoughts, I giving them meaning and value, I am delaying. And we can feel when we're delaying. So feeling bad is not about conditions and it's not about other people and it's not about a failure of a separate one we call ourself uh, something that's separate from everything else it's not about any of that it's it's about um, giving thoughts from ego meaning and value okay you have elected to be in time rather than eternity one is real one isn't time is not real eternity is and therefore believe you are in time, yet your election is both free and alterable. You do not belong in time. Your place is only in eternity, where God himself placed you forever. And where are we now? We're in eternity. <laughs> are we in time? No. But we perceive time. And we always have help for our perception. Okay, paragraph two. Guilt feelings are the preservers of time. They induce fears of retaliation or abandonment and thus ensure that the future will be like the past. This is the ego's continuity. It gives the ego a false sense of security by believing that you cannot escape from it, but you can and must. So the ego is not us and we can escape from it. And we do. It's actually already done. We have escaped from it, but we're reviewing mentally um, our pretending that we were ensnared or imprisoned by ego. God offers you the continuity of eternity in exchange. When you choose to make this exchange, you will simultaneously exchange guilt for joy, viciousness for love, and pain for peace. My role is only to unchain your will and set it free. So what can Jesus do? What can spirit do? What can light friends do? Anyone who's with us beneficially, they can unchain our will from my will, the perceived will of a separate entity to thy will, unified harmonic will. That's our will set free. That's the will for perfect happiness. Your ego cannot accept this freedom and will oppose it at every possible moment and in every possible way. So that's good to know because whenever I feel opposition, I'm just fighting the gift of our harmonic will. That's, that's all I'm doing. No matter what it is in the world, I seem to be opposing. I'm seeing that thing in the world so I can believe that separate thing in the world is real. So I don't have to notice I'm actually resisting the offering of harmonic will that is it's being offered to me in this moment. And my opposition and my belief that I am a separate one and I can oppose, that's more important to me in this moment. Okay. And as its maker, you recognize what it can do because you gave it the power to do it. And it's all imaginary. To the extent I believe it's real, I can feel that. I feel the distress. 
Okay, paragraph three. Remember the kingdom always and remember that you who are part of the kingdom cannot be lost. The mind that was in me is in you, for God creates with perfect fairness. Let the Holy Spirit remind you always of his fairness and let me teach you how to share it with your brothers. So the mind is the same in all because God creates with perfect fairness. And when I want to, what I want to see is the sameness everywhere, then that's what I want to see. Um, when I feel any stress or tension or distress, it's that's me wanting to see something other than the sameness in us all. So it's never about conditions. It's never about what seems to surround us, what I'm projecting out there. It's always about the choice I'm making in this moment. And I can tell by how it feels. Okay. How else can the chance to claim it for yourself be given you? The two voices speak for different interpretations of the same thing simultaneously or almost simultaneously, for the ego always speaks first. So that's why we can employ waiting. We hear the ego, we know how that feels, and then we wait because we recognize there is a sane voice and the sane voice can speak to me too. So I'll just set aside what the ego said and I'll remember something sane like myself, my shared self, the self I shared with, with you, who I share with you, is ruler of the universe. I remember a lesson from A Course in Miracles. And then that settles me into what spirit can tell me. Alternate interpretations were unnecessary until the first one was made. So I have to use a time word prior to the idea of separation. There was no need for interpretation. There was no perception of separate things. So interpretation came about as the result of the desire to, to see separately, to, to have separation perception. But everything we made can be used to help us return to the full awareness of home. So interpretation can be used by spirit. The ego speaks in judgment, and the Holy Spirit reverses its decision much as a higher court has the power to reverse a lower court's decision in the, uh, decisions in this world. And that's good news because whenever I feel physical or emotional pain or tension or d distress, there's been a judgment made in my mind. And when I go in... And I remember something essential, like my self is ruler of the universe, <laughs> the shared self. When I remember something essential, and I put myself in that place to receive, then whatever decision I made to align with ego, to believe a thought that ego sent me, and then that pain, emotional or physical, was my indicator. Hey, you just believed a thought from ego. Wake up <laughs> and, and settle into what you are then the decision of the court for guilt, it gets reversed. Again and again and again, we can allow the decision about guilt to be reversed. And wherever I'm seeing guilt out there in the world, I feel guilt about what I perceive to be myself and what I believe myself has done. And I'm covering it up by seeing something guilty out there that I can say, hey, that's other than me. The ego's decisions are always wrong because they are based on the error they were made to uphold. Nothing the ego perceives is interpreted correctly. Not only does the ego cite scripture for its purpose, but it even interprets scripture as a witness for itself. Now, here's where I have to be careful. <laughs> here's where I get told. Eyes on your own copy book, please. Because we have divine siblings out there and we perceive our siblings enacting things. What they're enacting is always a helpful drama for us. That's what I need to keep at the forefront of my mind. If I'm looking at one of my family out there and it seems like the action they're performing is citing scripture, I'm going to be lost if I judge them as being an ego, as I judge them as coming from fear, because what am I doing? I'm projecting. 
So what can I get out of this sentence? Not only does the ego cite scripture for its purpose, if I'm going to hear scripture, religious text, I think that's what that refers to of any kind, well, then it refers to the Bible. Um, if I'm going to hear it, and the ego is going to tell me how to interpret it, that's my option. I can have the ego interpret religious text or the Bible, or I can listen to hear what spirit does with it. But as for everyone else that out there, I have to remember that if I feel any criticism, any categorizing, any hierarchy, any seeing of differences, this is the ego's work. And I can't fall into that trap by saying, hey, someone out there is doing that. It's just about my interaction with scripture, if I have any. The Bible is a fearful thing in the ego's judgment. Perceiving it as frightening, it interprets, interprets it fearfully. Being afraid, you do not appeal to the higher court because you believe its judgment would also be against you. There are many, this is paragraph five, examples of how the ego's interpretations are misleading, but a few will suffice to show how the Holy Spirit can reinterpret them in his own light. Okay, paragraph six. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. He interprets to mean what you consider worth cultivating, you will cultivate in yourself. Your judgment of what is worthy makes it worthy for you. So, it's not about being punished, and it's not about time. <laughs> it's about what I'm willing to see in others. I will also see an experience in myself. Am I willing to see innocence in others, abundance in others, ease in others, inspiration coming through others, happiness in others? then I'll experience it here too, because here is there. It's the same thing. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, is easily reinterpreted if you remember that ideas increase only by being shared. The statement emphasizes that vengeance cannot be shared. Give it therefore to the Holy Spirit who will undo it in you because it does not belong in your mind, which is part of God. So it's like the Lord saying, hey, give me that knife. I'll take care of it. I'll dispose of it. And by the way, it isn't even real and it could never hurt you. So it's just about having something harmful or harmful thinking removed from us. Okay, paragraph eight, I will visit the sins of the fathers unto the third and fourth generation as interpreted by the ego is particularly vicious. It becomes merely an attempt to guarantee the ego's own survival. To the Holy Spirit, the statement means that in later generations, he can still reinterpret what former generations had misunderstood and thus release the thoughts from the ability to produce fear. And this is very much something I see. Whatever I didn't learn in uh, lives that get shown to me, a little slice of a life, <laughs> where I felt fear or resistance or anger or something, it can be healed right now. So whatever I didn't resolve seemingly then, and it's interesting to see that all the slices of lives I have been shown were from the past, nothing from the future. <laughs> Anyhow, I get shown these little slices that does not have to be your way. Your way is appropriate for you, but this is one, just one of many ways that I get forgiveness opportunities. It's like I didn't learn it then, but I can learn it now. And everything is released in that new perception that understands nothing really went wrong. Okay. Paragraph nine, the wicked shall perish becomes a statement of atonement. If the word perish is understood as be undone. Every loveless thought must be undone, a word the ego cannot even understand. To the ego to be undone means to be destroyed. The ego will not be destroyed because it is part of your thought, but because it is uncreative and therefore unsharing, it will be reinterpreted to release you from fear. The part of your mind that you have given to the ego will merely return to the kingdom where your whole mind belongs. So the ego will not be destroyed. It will just be reinterpreted. 
and in that reinterpretation, we're released from fear and from resistance. You can delay the completion of the kingdom, but you cannot introduce the concept of fear into it. Paragraph 10. You need not fear the higher court will condemn you. It will merely dismiss the case against you. There can be no case against a child of God, and every witness to guilt in God's creations is bearing false witness to God himself. So anytime I think anybody is guilty of anything, I'm really making a case against myself. And I can remember that case is always instantly dismissed by the higher court. So what can I focus upon instead of the cases ego is making by sending me thoughts of judgment and evaluation? I can remember myself is ruler of the universe. That's the lesson I'm focusing on today. 200 something, I don't know what number. <laughs> myself is ruler of the universe. This, the universe, the self I share with you. That is what I can remember. Instead of that chatter, that the ego is sending to me, and then I can stop delaying. Let's see. Okay. Trying to find my place here. Appeal everything you believe gladly to God's own higher court, because it speaks for him and therefore speaks truly. It will dismiss the case against you and against everybody else. However carefully you have built it up, The case may be foolproof, but it is not (laughs) God-proof. So when we say something's foolproof, we're using data from a fantasy world to pretend the world is real. So we could say, I know you committed this crime and I have all the proof to prove that that body committed that crime. I'm taking separate details from a fantasy world (laughs) that ego is sending me thoughts to build and make And I'm trying to insist that somehow this fantasy world, because of the details I'm speaking about my fantasy world, that it's real. That that's what's happening, but it's not real. The Holy uh, Holy Spirit will not hear it because he can only witness truly. His verdict will always be thine is the kingdom because he was given to you to remind you of what you are. Paragraph 11. When I said I am come as a light unto the world, into the world, I meant that I came to share the light with you. Remember my reference to the ego's dark glass, and remember also that I said do not look there. It is still true that where you look to find yourself is up to you. Your patience with your brother is your patience with yourself. Is not a child of God worth patience? I have shown you infinite patience because my will is that of our Father, from whom I learned of infinite patience. His voice was in me, as it is in you, speaking for patience toward the sonship in the name of its creator. And paragraph 12, now you must learn that only infinite patience produces immediate effects. This is the way in which time is exchanged for eternity. So infinite patience... That's something we can sink into at any time, infinite patience. And when we remember a lesson or we just go into presence, we just let go of the thought of ego we were kind of chewing on, where do we go to? We go to infinite patience, to our true nature, to what is most natural for us. Okay, just a second here. Okay, this is uh, the way in which time is exchanged for eternity. Infinite patience calls upon infinite love, and by producing results now, it renders time unnecessary. So that is what I can always relax back into if I notice anything contrary to infinite patience, if I notice anything contrary to infinite love. If I notice that I'm seeing anything in you that is not infinite patience, that is not infinite love, that is what I can relax back into. And that is what handles what happens next, what I see next, according to my perception. I, as a separate one, have nothing to do with it. I allow myself to be shown what infinite patience which is always alive in me and you and everywhere, 
and infinite love would show us. We have repeatedly said that time is a learning device to be abolished when it is no longer useful. So for as long as I experience time, I experience these opportunities to relax back into our true nature of infinite patience and infinite love. It's always here. It's always available. It's, all, it's like a chair. You can always sit down in it. Stop pressing forward so much. You can always just sit down in it and receive. Okay. And see. Just finding my next sentence here. The Holy Spirit who speaks for God in time also knows that time is meaningless. He reminds you of this in every passing moment of time because it is his special function to return you to eternity and to remain to bless your creations there. He is the only blessing you can truly give because he is truly blessed. Because he has been given you freely by God, you must give him as you received him. So to see him everywhere, to see spirit everywhere in everything and everyone is our function here. And the forms will vary, but the essence, the nature is always the same everywhere as I'm willing to have it be shown to me in that way. Okay, so that's the section. Thank you and happy healing.